The president made his budget request recently, and this is going to result in a lot more government jobs. But not every federal agency saw an increase. Let's get into it. Let's talk about the agencies that have seen a decrease in funding first, starting with the Department of Homeland Security. Now, one thing to keep in mind with the Department of Homeland Security, there are over a dozen of sub agencies that fall underneath that big umbrella. So there's immigration, there's the Coast Guard, and a whole bunch of other ones. So some of these sub agencies actually saw an increase, but a lot of them didn't. Also, the Department of Homeland Security is the fourth largest agency in the federal government. They have about 200,000 employees, and it only saw a decrease of 1% in funding. The next one is the Department of Transportation. We also saw a slight decrease in this department. There's still about four to 500 jobs on usajobs.gov. If you're looking for a job right now in the agency, there are jobs out there. But you have to consider that the Department of Transportation, they received over a billion dollars in funding last year. And they deal with pretty much everything revolving around rails, buses, infrastructure. So because they received so much funding last year, probably one of the reasons why they're not getting as much in the year coming up. The next agency is the Small Business Administration. This is one of the smaller agencies, only about 100 jobs. If you, if you go onto USA Jobs right now, you're only gonna find roughly 100 jobs that you can actually apply for. All right, so pretty much every other agency saw some kind of increase when it came to their funding. Now, looking at this, the funding was done to address certain priorities. The first priority was customer service. Now, the government is notorious when it comes to their customer service. Usually, if you're trying to contact somebody in a federal agency, you can be on hold for hours. You might not even be able to reach somebody. So it's no surprise, agencies like the Veteran Affairs, the Social Security Administration, the Department of Labor, all of these agencies are receiving some money to address that customer experience. Overall, we're talking about over 100 new customer service type jobs, even in the TSA. The TSA, they're receiving new customer experience professionals. So while you're getting yelled at to take off your shoes and take out your computer from its case, there'll be someone there that you can address your customer concerns or any kind of complaints you might have. Next is aviation, and we're seeing the FAA looking to increase the number of air traffic controllers by 1800. Now, one thing to consider with air traffic controllers, very well paid occupation. In the government, they're not even on the GS scale. They are on a different pay scale that allows them to get paid over $200,000 a year on the high side. So if you're looking to get in to be an air traffic controller, a lot more opportunities will be opening up in the following year. One of the reasons for this boost is due to the pandemic, a lot of the air travel was down. So there wasn't a need for a lot of air traffic controllers. So we're still in reaction mode, trying to rebound from the lows of the pandemic. Next is immigration. Now immigration falls under the Department of Homeland Security, but its funding is looking to triple. That's what the president wants. There's a lot of backlogs when you're talking about immigration. There's a lot of manpower needed when we're talking about naturalization cases, all of these type of cases. And speaking of that, the refugee cap for this year is 125,000. Usually on a normal year, that would be at 95,000. So we're seeing an increase. And that 125,000 limit, that doesn't include the Ukraine refugees, which we've already received thousands. And speaking of that, the Justice Department is asking for a 66% increase to its immigration court because we have a 1.8 million case backlog. The next one's border security. And when we're talking about border security, immigration, all of those fall underneath the Department of Homeland Security. But for this one, they're looking to increase border patrol agents by 300 to 400 new agents and about 450, 460 assistance, administrative assistance to support that. So if you wanted to become a Border Patrol agent or you wanted to work in immigration, this upcoming year might provide the opportunities that you're looking for. Okay, the next one is the Veteran Fund. So the Veteran Fund has $20 billion in it with a B in order to address the, the toxic gas, the burn pit, toxic fumes. You might have been hearing about it in the news. It's a, big, it's a big deal because veterans who were deployed and exposed to all these toxic fumes, they're having respiratory illness, 
they're having migraines. So because of this, the VA is looking for more providers, more customer service, and generally expanding their agency, which creates jobs. They creates jobs for people who are interested in working in that type of capacity. Next is worker protection, and this aligns with the Department of Labor. The Department of Labor, the last three or four years, they had a 14% decrease in their funding, and we're looking to put some more money back into it. This agency usually deals with the classification of work. It also deals with investigation, workplace safety. All of these have been identified as a priority, so more money is going into the Department of Labor. All right, so the next agency is actually receiving the highest percent increase, and that's 19%. The agency is EPA, the Environmental Protective Agency. This agency, as you know, has dwindled down over the last five and six years. So what they're looking to do is they want to employ about 2,000, 2,400 employees. That's how many workers they want added to what they, they're currently staffed at right now. So it goes without saying, if you want to work at the EPA, be on the lookout. The next 12, 18 months, we should start seeing a lot more positions opening up to work in the EPA. In this budget was also a request to increase the number of ATF special agents. So ATF is one of the smaller law enforcement agents. I mean, most people think about FBI, CIA, DEA. We don't really talk about the ATF that much, but it's looking to expand. Also included is a grant to help cities and states hire and recruit more police officers. This will be up to 100,000, 100,000 additional police officers all across the country. So it's a good time for law enforcement. Now this is just the start. It's widely viewed as the blueprint to the budget. So the discussions, the arguments, the debating, all of that still has to happen in Congress. There's a lot of people in Congress that are against government spending, that we're spending too much, that our national deficit is too high. So there's going to be a lot of back and forth before we have anything finalized. And when it comes to government budgets, usually these things come down to the wire. So you're going to have to wait till the end of the fiscal year and then, you know, deal with the potential government shutdowns and people standing their ground and back and forth. It's a mess. But hopefully we'll start to see a little bit more clarity as we approach the end of the fiscal year. All right. So if you're watching this and you're interested in the government job, but maybe you want to understand the experience from the perspective of somebody who works in the government. If that interests you, then I want you to watch this video next. If you would like to see more videos like this, please click like and subscribe. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.